on October 4th, the White House actually released what it calls an AI Bill of Rights. So this is a document put together by uh, the science team on the, at the White House that offers a blueprint of these five principles that they have identified. And these are supposed to guide the design, the use, and the deployment of automated systems. And so we'll kind of dive into what those five principles are, but at a really high level, they've outlined principles like developing safe and effective systems, um, putting in place protections for uh, algorithmic discrimination to prevent that, ensuring data privacy, providing enough notice and explanation of how AI tools are being used to consumers, and then also offering human alternatives, um, considerations and fallbacks if something goes wrong or if consumers want the option to do so. So before we dive in, it's really important to kind of note that they're actually the AI Bill of Rights. It's not in any way legally or otherwise binding uh, from the White House, but it, I, I do think despite there is a lot of commentary, rightly so online, that you know perhaps it could have more teeth, it could be expanded, but I actually do think we both agree it's a really important and interesting step forward um, with the government actually getting involved in how artificial intelligence works, how consumers engage with it, and how um, it impacts our daily lives. So that that's kind of what immediately jumped out to me. We could dive into each of these principles, but I think the first point I would have is at a high level, this is definitely an important development regardless of you know, how much of it actually ends up being implemented into law? Like, what did you think about that? Yeah, I mean, when I saw it, for sure, I put it on LinkedIn right away. And I think what I said was not legislation, you know, not anything formal, but it it is a, an important step forward. I think what concerns me and what we often talk about the Institute and, um, you know, some of our content, and I think even in the book, we have a chapter on responsible AI, is consumers are certainly aware that their data is uh, absorbed by tech companies. Like they, they know their data is going to use, whether it's informing an algorithm within TikTok or, you know, what predicting purchase behavior, like they know that the data is out there and that it is being used by brands and technology companies to make predictions about their behavior and to drive actions. I think generally people would get that concept. How it does it and how the AI works is a very abstract thing to even uh, business leaders we talk to. Mm -hmm. So to the average consumer who is targeted by AI, you know, to drive either personalized ads or communications or offers of promotions, or, you know, even when it starts working into making predictions of, uh, related to health or finance or wellness or risk, you know, insurance, uh, mortgages, like there's all these ways AI is just everywhere in our lives today. And the average consumer has no clue, like mm -hmm. how that stuff works or that it's even there underlying the technology. And so I don't think it's reasonable to believe that consumers can, can really understand this and take control at a, at a wide scale level of their own, like protect themselves basically from the AI. So then the next step is you rely on the companies that are building and using the AI to make decisions that are always in the best interest of consumers. And let's be honest, that is not going to happen. So while tech companies can set their own guidelines and put guardrails up to protect the consumer, at the end of the day, they have, they have uh, financial goals they are also trying to achieve. And there is often a, 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 a imbalance internally within these companies about finance over human good and well-being, I guess, yeah. AI for good. And we've seen this play out in, you know, some pretty high profile things like Google and um, like Target, the, you know, the historic example of Target, you know, using some data to make some predictions about um, customers that backfired. Uh, but the, it's, you know, it's everywhere. And so I, I just, I feel like Government needs to get involved. I'm not necessarily a big government guy, like everybody, you know, government should come in and do everything. But I, I don't think in this case that the tech companies alone are going to solve this. I don't think they have the motivation to solve this at a very high level. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I, I think what people should do is read it. Like, we're not going to spend the next 45 minutes talking about the Bill of Rights and going through, like, it's a blueprint for, they're, they're basically laying out what it could be. 
Mm-hmm. I think everybody should read it or at least read an in-depth summary of it <clears throat> and see what they're trying to do. And I think what you should do is connect it to your company. Like our belief is that every brand and every tech company should have like a, a, an ethics guidelines, an AI ethics guidelines. So right. if you're a brand buying AI technology or leveraging it on the data you consume, you should have rules in place that guide your team on how you're going to use what AI enables because it gives us superpowers. And we have to be able to have guidance for our teams internally about how we will use this. Now, the same goes for if you're building it. I think we use the example of Adobe in the book mm. and their ethics policies around the development of AI technology. And it's, this stuff is moving so fast. The guardrails are going to have to keep being rebuilt and moved and rebuilt and moved because things that weren't even possible three months ago, we'll talk about some of it in in the next topics, things that weren't possible are now possible. And now the question is, well, well, do we use image generation technology? We use video generation technology. Do we create synthetic reps? Like all these things that most companies don't even know you can do. And so that's where I think it's just critical that not only is the government stepping in and saying, okay, we, we need a point of view on this and we need to give some guidance. I think the action step for marketers and business leaders is you cannot punt this, like push it forward for a few more years. Like, oh, we'll get to the AI stuff. It's, it's too late then. Like you need to be thinking from the ground up, how do we ethically apply AI to what we do? And you have to have the, the consumer has to be human centered, has to have the consumer in mind in every decision that's made. So that, I mean, that's kind of my high level takeaway from this without getting into all the details Yeah, is the impact for the individual brand and for the tech companies building it is the importance of thinking about the ethical use of AI, responsible use of AI in your company. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that when you say business leaders should go read this, it's not only interesting and important to read, it's actually, I think, a decent set of guidelines for what you need to be thinking about in your own company. You and I both were just at the Digital Now conference in New Orleans. And I remember when we ran a workshop there with a bunch of different nonprofit and business and association leaders, one of the first questions that people started asking was really, really difficult and interesting questions around ethics and the morality and um, the responsible use of this technology. So regardless of what type of business you run, I mean, these five principles, first off, safe and effective systems, you should be protected from unsafe or ineffective systems. I mean, business leaders need to understand not all of these systems work in the way they're intended. There's always the possibility for them to go wrong. Um, Even things too, like number two, algorithmic discrimination protections. We have seen many different examples of algorithms that actively or accidentally discriminate against certain groups, certain data types. And a lot of it's unintentional. It's not even built with that intention in mind, but it's on the brand to figure out exactly how these things are working and impacting things like your brand equity, your business operations. I mean, legal, there's plenty of legal ramifications. And then just very quickly, things like data privacy, understanding how um, explanations of how the tool itself actually works. Oftentimes the people building it can't always 100% even tell you what is going on behind the scenes. And then last but not least, one of the principles is about human alternatives. If possible, giving consumers the ability to opt out of some of the results of these technologies. These are all front and center issues that brands are going to have to worry about very, very soon if they're not already. And that, that one in particular caught my attention, the opting out. I, I, I think it, it, it the, in principle, what they're trying to do is important. Unfortunately, I think what will happen is it'll be like the cookies. Like everyone just yeah. has allow, like fine. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like when, um, you know, if an example here of it being applied would be like Facebook or Instagram, where you can opt out of ad targeting, like personalized ads, you're still going to get ads, they just won't be relevant to you. So would you rather see relevant ads or (laughs) irrelevant ads? Right, right. But again, that's why it's like, it's an important step. It puts the conversation out there. It sort of stakes these five core areas as things that we should be thinking about. And like you said, you should be considering these in your business. And what we hear from, um, you know, like Tim Hayden and Chris Penn, like people we talk to about privacy, uh, Cal Adube, but Pandata, what I always get told is, um, 
just assume the regulations are coming. Like mm -hmm. you should just put best practice in place now to make your AI human centered and just assume the restrictions are going to be there. Um, we had a speaker at make on Gemma who was uh, mm -hmm. from Europe and sh I was saying like, oh, wasn't it harder to do AI? And she goes, no, no, no. Like we have the benefit because we already have the restrictions. So we're mm -hmm. building our AI with more restrictive oversight and governance, which actually is great because you're going to have to do it in the U.S. eventually. We're already there. Right. And so her point was like, it actually makes things easier because there's some guardrails in place. So yeah, I just, again, as you think about scaling the use of AI, if you're in a bigger enterprise and this is like top of mind, this is the kind of stuff you've got to be thinking about from the ground up and figuring out who within the organization needs to be involved in these conversations because AI adoption is not just a bunch of individual use cases. To truly scale it, you're going to have to become like an AI emergent company where AI is infused into everything. And there's going to be a lot of hard decisions that are going to have to be made. And, and those decisions are going to have to be reevaluated as the tech keeps evolving.